Welcome to the fourth chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians. Paul is continuing now in his letter, and he is um, giving his credentials more or less. And here he begins, and he says, Therefore, having this diakonian, this service, a deacon that comes from that, as we were shown mercy, we tire not. And he's talking about when he was given the um, directions by Jesus on the road to Damascus, I think. And um, he was shown mercy because he was taking the uh, believers to prison and treating them harshly. And he was shown mercy because he wasn't uh, destroyed, but he was put into this ministry by Jesus. And so therefore he says we tire not. And when he says we, a lot of times we say we when it's really ourselves, or you could say the Holy Spirit with him, God with him, or it could be the other people that are with him. But we forbade the hidden things of shame, not walking in the cleverness, nor acting treacherously in the word of God. Uh, the, the things that are cause shame, uh, we forbade ourselves to do these things, uh, fighting against the human nature, and whether or not he was always successful or not, uh, we will assume that he had his hard, difficult times controlling uh, the things of shame that he's talking about, uh, or seeing them and other people doing these things of shame, and not allowing them to do the things that they w were doing. So it could be, um, it doesn't say uh, it was somebody else or it was himself. And not walking in the cleverness, nor acting treacherously in the word of God. He wasn't being clever and telling the people that he had all knowledge and therefore um, could prove it by his high intellect, but uh, in using the word of God as more of a sword than a healing instrument. But by uh, open display of the truth, commending ourselves to every conscience of men. And um, they were opening themselves up to all types of people they're going through and telling people about the uh, things of God and opening themselves up to ridicule and all sorts of um, things. But uh, that's what they were doing. They were... Uh, going out and, and uh, displaying this in the open, as Jesus did. And he went into the temple and uh, told the people. And then when they took him in by night, he, he said, well, you, and then they questioned him. He said, well, you know, I spoke openly in the temple. And um, so this is what Paul is doing. It's not in hiding. But if even our good news is being covered, uh, the kalima we mentioned in the last uh, the um, last chapter about the kalima, the covering over the uh, over the ones that are Jews that weren't believers. But even if our good news, Evangelion, good news, uh, is being covered, it is covered among the ones perishing. Sad to say, so the Jews are missing out on the deliverance. Instead of being delivered, they'll perish in the fire, whatever it is, I don't can't imagine. I don't want to know. Uh, it's not going to be good. But um, giving up the uh, deliverance for uh, covering yourself up to hear the truth is, is a um, tragic mistake. If anybody is doing that, I'd uh, hopefully they would consider the alternative. That is to believe that Jesus is the deliverer. That He is going to deliver from the lake of fire and bringing a person into paradise. I'd much rather be in paradise than in eternity, or the aeonia, forever, whatever. Um, it's going to be uh, no turning back. And that's very difficult, and making a mistake like that and staying with the traditions if you're Jewish or staying with the world if you're of the nations um, is not a wise thing. In whom the God of this eon blinded the thoughts of the unbelieving. 
your enemy, our enemy, is the uh, God of this eon. Now, I don't believe he's uh, talking about his father, uh, God, but uh, Satan, when he was tempting Jesus, said every all the things of the world had been given to him. And the aeonos of this eon, so he is talking specifically of this eon, that eon that they were uh, in and we're in today until it's uh, done. People that go into the eons, uh, uh, they see uh, different, uh, what they call them, dispensations. The dispensation of man without sin, uh, before Adam when he lived without fall, then the dispensation of the fall up until um, the, the flood, and then after the flood, the renewed earth, uh, with uh, uh, up until uh, the time of basically Moses when the law was given on Sinai. That was another dispensation, another eon. People see these as eons, and uh, the eon that we are in is the eon of grace um, that uh, God has poured out his grace. We're not under a Mosaic law. So as to not shine forth to them the illumination of the good news. So this... Uh, God of the age is have a, has a purpose so that we won't see the things of the glory of the Christ, who is the image of the unseen God. A lot of people say, well, where does Jesus say that he is uh, God? It, well, there's no place where I, he says, I am God, the Son of God, and um, you've seen the Father, you have seen me. And here Paul is relating how Christ is the image of the unseen God, of the seen of God. I, I believe he's talking about um, Christ took human form. That is an image. It reflects light. A form, uh, it, when we have light, then anything uh, will reflect the light. The light source hits it, bounces off into our eyes, if you're, unless you're blind, of course, but it bounces off into your, to your eyes or a camera, and it picks uh, this up. If uh, you didn't have um, this physics uh, available, then who knows what there is without the light. But it says God is light, uh, but unseen of God. He's the image of the unseen of God. So uh, now, now I'm not exactly he's talking. He's, he's talking here. He could be possibly talking about the attributes of, of God or that he is actually an image of God that we can see. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't see him. It would just be a like, sort of like with the Muslims, you have an idea of what God is. For we do not proclaim ourselves, but Christ Jesus, Lord. They're not proclaiming themselves as being the end all of all discussion, and they are the rulers of the church, and so forth, but Christ Jesus, he is Lord, the L-O-R-D. The capital L is whenever it is Jesus. Interesting that it uses Lord because in the Old Testament, Greek Old Testament, the word Lord was used for the tetragrammaton. If you're uh, familiar with the tetragrammaton, the four letter Hebrew letters meaning what they call Yahweh or Jehovah. And uh, in the old apostolic Bible, it's all capital in the Old Testament, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord, uh, the uh, Jehovah. But in the New Testament, um, Jesus is a Lord, but it doesn't really use the tetragrammaton because this was written in, he, in Greek. So, uh, but he is L-O-R-D. There is a small L-O-R-D, which is a, like, a head of a family or a ruler, governor, so forth. And ourselves are your bondmen for the sake of Jesus. So instead of being uh, pushing themselves over in their authority, they're putting themselves as Jesus told them to be, to be servants. For God is the one having told light to radiate from darkness, from out of darkness, um, who radiated in our hearts for the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the person of Jesus Christ. In Genesis, uh, God said, let there be light in their Light was, light became, two words, light became. And 
what there was? Is there something else that people can pick up to see uh, that's not light, but yet uh, it is something that um, more or less radiates? It says here, who radiated in our hearts for the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of the God of God in the person of Jesus Christ. So our illumination, I think he's talking about here, is the spirit, the pneuma, and the pneuma is a form of illumination, just as light is a form of illumination. And the spirit only illuminates the things of God. There are evil spirits, and they illuminate, not illuminate, darken, actually, the things uh, that are good. And, uh, but the illumination uh, uh, in the, this doesn't say the light uh, who radiated in our hearts for the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the person of Jesus Christ. So we know him through this spiritual illumination, not a spotlight on him. But we have this treasure in earthenware vessels, our body, that the excess of the power might be of God and not from out of us. So we are uh, physical and spiritual also, but he's talking about we have this treasure that I think he's, the treasure is the pneuma, the spirit, when it's in earthenware vessels. We are made out of clay, but yet we still have within us uh, this uh, illumination of Christ, that the excess of the power might be of God and not from out of us. So again, the servant servitude of Paul. We are in every way afflicted, but not having been restricted. They were um, beaten, and uh, all, he was shipwrecked. He goes into one place, all the things bad that happened to him. But it hasn't restricted him. He's kept on going. Perplexed, uh, not knowing, wondering, but not left destitute. Uh, you can be perplexed and not know, but then if God is with you and he will not leave you, destitute, persecuted by the Jews uh, and by the nations, both. He was in between the rock and the hard place, but he wasn't abandoned. He was thrown down, and that's a figure of speech and physically uh, harmed in certain ways, but he wasn't destroyed, but not destroyed. At all times, the slaying of our Lord Jesus, carrying around about in the body, so uh, this is another figure of speech. You don't carry around the slaying of the Lord Jesus, but the uh, circumstances that they were under uh, is the same as Jesus. And when he was crucified, uh, he, he knew that he was um, going to be the target of the, uh, the Jews. And Paul also is going around knowing that he is the target by the Jews and the nations, that, if, that also the life of Jesus in our body should be manifested. So uh, they are going around and showing Christ uh, in their actions, in our body. Uh, you know, it's another figure of speech. It's not actually in his body. They're not seeing uh, the life of Jesus in, our, in this body, but in the actions of the body. So many figures of speech. There's a really a great book. Uh, by Benjamin Keach on figure, figures of speech. He wrote it, I think it was in the 1700s, and then later a Bullinger has a, uh, uh, E.W. Bullinger has a great book on figures of speech. Uh, let me show them to you here. I'll put this on pause for a second. Now here's uh, the book uh, by Benjamin Keach, the 1779 Figures of speech, and I picked this up in the archives bookstore in Pasadena. And here is uh, the opening page, and you can see it. I don't, you're not going to find it, I'm sure. If you do, it's worth a lot of money. Uh, and I hope that's picking that up. And then uh, later, Bullinger, E.W. Bullinger, in the uh, late 1800s, believe, uh, wrote this book, uh, Figures of Speech Used in the Bible. And uh, they're both great helps. I started reading about figures of speech because there's so many, especially in the New Testament and with Paul, 
uh, they're explained and illustrated. Uh, this is uh, by Baker Bookhouse. Um, it has uh, figures of speech, uh, uh, omissions, affecting words, affecting the sense, figures involving additions, affecting the sense by way of repetition, amplification, description, conclusion, interposition, reasoning. Uh, and then it goes into all this, uh, these different types of figures of speech. Uh, see if I can find a, one here. Uh, well, well, anyway, I can't find it. I, I don't want to spend the time to do that, but uh, there's, they're really great books. So carrying around the body, uh, and our body should be manifested. For continually, we, the living, are delivered up unto thanatone, thanatology, a study of death. They're delivered up uh, unto death. They're a marked people on account of Jesus. And that's what Jesus said, that you're going to be persecuted and taken. Uh, people are going to think they're doing good by putting you to death. That also the life of Jesus should be manifested in our mortal flesh. Well, he's not, again, another figure of speech. It's not manifested in the flesh uh, by the actions of our flesh, of our body, so that indeed death operates in us, but life in you, another figure of speech. I mean, death doesn't operate in us. Death is death. But the uh, position of being uh, marked for this death he's talking about here, um, it operates in um, in them in a, ba in a way that they're always under the, the, under the gun, more or less. But it, life in you, uh, you uh, have the opposite of us. You have the life. People aren't marking you for death. Now they were in some churches and others they weren't. And having the same panevma of the belief, according to the thing having been written, uh, I believe, therefore I spoke. This was in um, uh, one of the Psalms. Uh, we also believe, therefore we also speak. And um, it, the, I think it was, was it Jeremiah that um, was tired of all the problems com coming with uh, the, telling the children of Israel that what was coming and the, how they needed to repent and everything, and he just uh, wanted to give up. And But yet uh, there was a... Uh, the flame, a fire in him, it kept burning. He couldn't put it out. And uh, so he uh, kept on going. We have uh, this fire. We believe, therefore we speak. Knowing that the one having raised the Lord Jesus also will raise us through Jesus. So we see as Christians uh, the difference of our God in the form of his son, Jesus having the power over death. Uh, no other religion that I know of, Muslims or the Hindus or the Buddhists, have uh, anything like that. Nobody has walked on water, raised the dead, healed the uh, lepers and so forth, but yet Jesus has power. And he's been witnessed by many people. It said 5,000 saw him at one time after the resurrection. And they wrote these books, they've died uh, for Jesus uh, and been persecuted. And um, so we know that Jesus has the power over death. And so when you have that knowledge of that, it's a powerful thing for, within you that gives you, uh, gives you hope of that, you know, this is going to happen to me eventually. The Lord will raise uh, me and will stand beside with you. For all things are on account of you, that the favor superabounding uh, through the many should cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory. Uh, so everything that there he's writing to them, that not everything is that he's doing, but the things that are aimed towards them are superabounding and should cause them, uh, everybody, to have thanksgiving, even the people of other churches. Of God, therefore we tire not. But even if our outer man be corrupted, our flesh, which is corrupt, uh, had desires, and it's um, that's uh, in a, part of our body, 
and it's getting old. My body, I'm 75 years old, and I uh, my, cut my hand uh, the other day, and I crashed in, uh, tripped, and ran my head into a plastic um, tool shed, hit my knee. Now my knee's bruised, and uh, I have a bad hip. Everything is, uh, is getting worse. It's not getting better. So our bodies are corrupted. They're getting, they um, fall apart, deteriorate. Yet the inner man is restored day by day. I'm, I read the Bible every day, read God's word. Not that I um, do everything in the right way, but yet my, there's something in me that just, I'm going to stick with the Lord and read um, the word of God, and it helps restore me. Uh, if I didn't, I would be like the person that was uh, in the ocean and the boat sank and he was on a uh, he was on a life raft and the life raft was sitting there and he's doing fine. Nice sunny day. And, oh, I think I'm going to take a little swim. He jumps off the side and swims out a couple of feet and comes back and gets into the boat. And then the next day uh, does the same thing, goes a little bit further and all of a sudden one day he finds himself far so far out he can't see the life raft anymore and he uh, ends up drowning. And uh, so the word of God is the life raft for me, and I, uh, it restores me day to day. For the immediate lightness of our affliction uh, manufactures according to excess, uh, to excess, an eternal load of glory to us. Well, now I'm not uh, a, uh, have not had any affliction externally, just some people writing, you know, sort of uh, notes on, on these uh, videos and saying, you know, how I'm an idiot and how uh, boring or whatever. Uh, but that's about it. And that's not very, if that's the worst I have, wow, that's good. <laughs> some people go through a lot of uh, persecution in other countries. Uh, of our not watching the things being seen, but the things not being seen. Uh, we uh, In Hebrews it says, according to belief, all these died. And it gives a, a list of all the people that in, the, in belief uh, that had um, hope, but didn't see the things. Uh, in uh, Hebrews 11, 13, it mentions them, and then it continues not receiving the promises, but at a distance beholding them, and being persuaded and greeting and acknowledging that they are strangers and immigrants upon the earth. So uh, we have this uh, hope, uh, things not being seen. We, uh, are read, we read about the things in the Bible, but we, don't, uh, we have not actually seen them. And a lot of people we run across will try to discourage us to say this is all a lie or make-believe or myths and so forth. And the devil wants, uh, wants us to fall and uh, sends his uh, troops at us. But then he's, Paul continues and or says, for the things being seen are temporary. So everything that we see right now is only temporary, but the things not being seen are eternal. That's, that's the things we don't see, but they're going to be way longer than anything in this life. Everything we see right now is just uh, between our, <clears throat> excuse me, or between our birth and our death, uh, our time. The um, gamma for Genesis and the uh, theta for Thanatos in a line in between, birth to death equals X. He, in Greek, looks like an X, and that's chronos equals time. The, the theory of time, as far as the Bible, our time is within our the birth to the death. And then after that is the eternal, or the aeonial, if you will. Paul continues in uh, this description of uh, the better things to come and how we are looking for them in chapter 5. And I hope you'll join us in chapter 5 and continuing with Paul's letter to the uh, Corinthians. And God bless.